Now then, uh, thousands of people marched to City Hall in London this weekend to protest about the lack of affordable housing, claiming that many residents are being priced out of their own communities. Nick Wallace visited one of these housing battlegrounds. When a big building project rubs up against unhappy locals, it's rarely pretty. And here, not far from Wembley Stadium, things have got very ugly indeed. Local people have taken to the streets to protest at council plans to force them to give up homes many have lived in for decades to make way for developers. Now leaseholders who've bought their homes are challenging Barnet Council's use of compulsory purchase powers to rebuild the West Hendon estate. They say it's tearing their community apart. Jackie Coleman's lived here for nearly 20 years. Jackie, why are feelings running so high on this estate? We were all promised that we could all come back, but now they've changed their uh, plan and only about 200 will be allowed back onto this estate. But doesn't this place need to be redeveloped? I mean, it's, it's looking pretty shabby. Well, we always knew it was going to be regenerated, but the word they're using now is redevelopment, which involves total demolition of the whole estate. There are 596 properties here and three types of residents. Those who've bought their homes and who the council now want to buy out, secure tenants the council will have to rehouse, and temporary tenants who've been told they've no rights at all. Hello Alex, Hello. how are you? After eight years here, temporary tenant Alex Finney is being moved away by the council. He had been hoping to stay. What's it been like having to move on from here? Uh, a lot of stress and uh, I'm uh, on antidepressants at the time. I, I, I can't sleep. I'm, you know, you, you, you need the basics in life, like somewhere to live. His new flat's only a mile and a half away, but the move fills him with fear. I don't know anybody or, or uh, any, anything there and uh, I'll just be like, you know, out on a limb again. Despite nearly quadrupling the number of homes on the estate, the new Barrett Metropolitan Development will almost halve the amount of social housing available. Current owner-occupiers have been told shared equity schemes are on offer so they can stay put, but that means getting a mortgage. Not easy if you're an OAP. I've lived here since 1983. And I'm in my June, I'll be 86. Adelaide bought her flat for £11,000. 30 years on, she's being offered less than half the cost of a new flat in the rebuilt estate. You're being asked to buy a different property with the money they're going to give you from this home? Yeah. But the money they're going to give you for this it's been place... Nuts. They've won 407000 for a two-bedroom place. How much are they offering you for your place? 175 What do you think of that? Rubbish. And she may have a point. Similar flats in the area sell for more than £300,000. The council will say you get a good price for your flat, you get to move into a brand new property in a shared equity deal, everyone's a winner. How can they be a winner when, you know, they, they're offering just, just say under 200 grand for this, and to buy a place, is a two bedroom flat, is 407 grand. And where would I get a mortgage? That's right. At my age. Adelaide needs a solution, as building work's already begun. Richard Cornelius is the leader of Barnet Council. You've really messed this up, haven't you? Regeneration is all about residents, and the residents are up in arms. We want to get on with it, and this is the way to do it. The owner-occupiers are all getting shared equity in a new place, the secure tenants will all be housed on the estate as well, and the uh, temporary people will be accommodated locally. But the developers must be laughing into their sleeves. They've taken you for fools. 10% social housing. I don't they're think they have. They're making a fortune out of it. I this. don't think they have. I'm sure they're making money out of it. The residents say they're not getting the market value for their property. The surveyors work that out. They know what these places are worth, and people are getting a new flat. And the equity they've got in their existing flat is going into the new one as shared equity. Is that a fair deal? Yes. The public inquiry into the legality of Barnett's compulsory purchase orders isn't expected to publish its findings until after the general election. Meanwhile, for Adelaide, home's no longer a safe haven from the world outside. How do you feel right now living in your home? As if I'm in a prison. I want to see my days out here. I don't want to go anywhere else. 
you've got a feel for um, Adelaide there, but uh, Nick Nick joins us here. Um, the lack of affordable housing, it's not just a problem in West Hendon, it's happening all over the country. That's right, and affordable housing is all relative. Adelaide is, is being offered an amount of money that would buy her something probably a lot bigger elsewhere in the country, but why mm -hmm. should she have to move at her age? Yeah. And I think housing or affordable housing, we need to be clear exactly what it is. It is typically housing stock which is managed by a housing association or a council and made available to people who can't afford to buy or rent at full market rates. And there is a huge demand for it, as you might expect. But at the moment, only one in five of the country's largest councils are actually meeting their own affordable housing provision targets. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the point, because some developers, even though they've got the contract, are then reducing the quarter of affordable housing, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, how, how can that be? Well, how can they do that? A developer would typically go to a council, as many did during the last recession, and say, the market's changed. We've crunched the numbers and we can no longer make a decent profit if we build the same number of affordable homes that we originally said we would. Mm -hmm. Now, this number crunching process is known as a financial viability statement. And the problem is with these statements is that they're often not made public because the developers say they contain commercially sensitive information. Now, for campaigners, this is a really big issue because they say that these figures therefore cannot be subjected to scrutiny by outside agencies. And even though the councils do get to see the figures, sometimes the councils don't actually have the resources to challenge them properly. Mm -hmm. And I mean, a council can walk away from, from, a, from a developer if they say, we don't want to build these affordable homes, but then they run the risk of the developer saying, right, well, in that case, we're not taking part in the project at all. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, obviously, negative cases, but there must be some places where there are some positive examples that this is actually working, that they are meeting their targets. There are plenty round, round the country. There's uh, a place in Totnes in Devon called Culverdale Road, which has won an award, actually, for its eco-friendly and sustainable approach to affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Also, in Merthyr Tidville, there was an old building which was uh, known as Vulcan Road, and this had fallen into some disrepair. A developer came in made it full of affordable <coughs> housing, which, which really made the local community delighted. But that's mm. on a completely different scale to what's going it on in, in West Hendon. And plus it's the numbers game well, as well. Well, the, the truth is every area and every council is going to have to deal with different things when it comes yeah. to the conflicting interests that they have to balance. Nick, as always, thanks ever so much.